So let's try to implement insertion sort using Java. Now basically even before we implement that, before we write the code, let's write the algorithm on the board and then we'll try to convert that into code. So what we'll do is, first of all, let's create some, let's get some values, okay? So we also need a array. So let's say I will name this as uh, array itself, ARR, and then it will have some values. So let's, let me create a array here and we'll take few values. Let's say we got uh, five values. Of course, you can go for more values here. And then let me just say these values are the three, six, two, one, five. Okay, so we got this five values. Now, I want some variables as well. So as I mentioned before, we don't swap here, right? We do shifting of the values. So of course, to achieve that, we need inner loop and the outer loop. So let's say we got the outer loop, which will, will go for for loop. So let's say we have a for loop here. And then we have to take a variable, which is i for the outer loop counter. And then inside this, we are going to have a while loop, which will have, let's say, some condition. Of course, you can also go for for and for, but then when you talk about insertion, using while loop inside makes much more sense because we want to we want to run this based on the condition, not on the number of iterations, okay? So this is your outer loop, let's finish it here. This is your inner loop, let's finish it here. And let's write the code there. Now, we need two variables as I mentioned. Of course, in the while loop, we are not going to create a variable, we are going to use one variable, but let's also go for J. So we need our I variable. Let me just write I here. We need a J variable and we need a key as well so that you can store this value somewhere. So at, at one point you will compare and you will save it. Now, from where we are going to start this? Now, if you want to understand what, what we are going to do, it's very, it's very simple. So initially you will take your six as a key so when you write this variable, we'll say key is initially six, okay? Now how you're going to get six? So let's say we take a variable i here and then we'll keep the j here, okay? So we're not going to start i from the first one. We're going to start i from the second one and then j will be the first value. Now i will represent the outer loop and j will change in the inner loop as well, okay? So that's why we are going for i and j. We could have gone for different variable name, but we got used to i and j for the outer loop and the inner loop. Okay, so now uh, what you're going to do? So the idea is very simple. Once you got a key, which is six in this case, now how you got six, maybe we can do something like this. We'll say arr -R of i, whatever i represents, we'll save that in the variable k or key. And then we're going to start j by saying j is equal to i minus one. So i is starting from one, so j is i minus one. That means the value for j initially will be zero and i is one. Now what you're gonna do with this? It's very simple. You will simply compare the value of j, which is this, the first value. So you will compare j with the key. If this value is greater than the key, then you will do the shifting part. At this point, we don't need that, right? Because the value of j, where the j represents, is less than the key, then you don't have to do any shifting part. So this is already sorted, okay? But let's go for the next iteration. Now, when you send it next iteration, it's very simple. What you simply do is, so you shift your value of i here, and you shift your value of j here, because we know that the three and six, if you compare this two, they are sorted. Let's go for the next one. Now in this, what you will do is you will check. Again, you will change certain things, right? If you can see this will change because now ARR -R of I is not six. ARR -R of I is basically two. Okay, so key is two now. What about the value of I? Even I is changed. I is now two. So index is two. So let me also write index so that it will make much more sense, right? So that those are the index value. So I value is two now. What about J? So J is I minus one. So J will start from one. That's done. And now you will apply a condition. So what basically condition we are checking for? So of course, if you write the code here, so I is initially starting with one. We are not starting with zero. And then we'll go till I less than N if the value, if the length of this array is N and then we'll say I plus plus. Okay, and then we'll assign the value. Okay, well, let's not write the actual code. Let's write some dummy code. So let's say we got a key variable. The value for key is basically ARR, which is the array of I. And that's what we are doing here. That's one thing. Next, we also need J variable. So we'll say J is equal to I minus one. Okay, that's how we're going to start. Now, what you're going to compare in the while loop. So in the while loop, it's very simple. You will check for the ARR. So ARR of J, okay, let me just say, I'll complete this here. So this, if this is greater 
than the key because the shifting part will come only when whatever is represented by j is greater than the key. So if you can see the key is 2 here and in this case yes it is greater. So 6 is greater than 2. So what you do is you basically perform some operation. Now what operation I'm going to perform? So basically first of all I will take this key somewhere of course we are storing that key uh, 2 in the key variable and then you do the shifting. Shifting of what? So sh you will first compare this 2 with 6 and now we know that we have to sh shift 6. So you will shift 6 here. Then that's one done, right? Can you put 2 here? We can actually, we can put 2 here. But the problem is we also know that we have to compare 2 with the previous value, which is 3 in this case. So you will not shift 2 there, but we'll shift 3 here. But then to shift 3 here, what we have to also do is we have to first shift our j here on the first location. That means we are also going to perform j minus minus, right? So what I'm saying is the first option you're going to perform is shifting the values, right? So how do you shift? You simply take the next value. So initially J was here, right? So this value six is going here. So that means what we can do is we can say ARR of J plus one, which is in this case two, is ARR of J. By doing this, what you're doing is you're shifting. So the J initially was here, which is one. So index of J was one or the value of J was one. Then you're saying j of 2, I mean j becomes 2. Then what we are saying is we are saying j plus 1 which is 2. So the value of 6 which was here will move here. That's what we are doing on this line. That's a shifting part. And then you will say j minus minus. So, so you can say j minus minus or you can say j minus 1. Even both works. So this is the entire logic you have, right? But this loop will repeat, right? Now when it will repeat, look at the condition here. The condition is whatever j, so we are shifting j backwards, right? j is now here. So we'll check if a r out of j is greater than key. In this case, yes, you can see the key is 2, a r out of j is 3, so it is greater, so we'll shift. So how do you shift? Basically, you do the same operation which is there inside the while loop. So if you compare this operation, this is what it is doing the shifting part, right? And then we know that, of, of course, if you can see here, we have one more step. You will do j minus 1, which means your j basically moves 1 here because uh, when you reduce the value of j, it, become, it became 0, right? And then again, you're doing it, so it will become j, uh, j becomes minus 1. So we have to stop it here. Once the j becomes less than zero, we have to stop. But don't you think we have to also add that condition in the while loop? So we'll do that. We'll say, and j should be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, this is one condition we have to add. If this is false, if j is not less than or equal to zero, then you will do the last, last step. The last step is very simple. You move your two here. And the way you can do that is by saying ARR of j plus one because j became minus one. We don't want minus one. We want zero is equal to k is equal to key. So basically this is where the value goes first. Now by doing this, we were able to sort the first three values. Now what next? Of, of course, you will increment the value of i. So when you say increment, that means the value of the i variable goes here. And again, for the next iteration, j goes i minus one, right? Because of this basically. For the outer loop, the i value is incrementing, but the j value is just before i. And again, you, just, you do the same things. What are the same things? You first check if the key, okay, we have to update the key as well. Now, how do you update the key? Now, the key value is arr of i, which is in this case should be 1. So the new key is 1 and j i is what? i is 3 and j is 2. Okay, new key value is 1. You will compare. If the ARR of J, this is the condition we're checking now. If ARR of J, which is in this case is six, is greater than the key, in this case, yes, you perform this operation. What is the operation? It's very simple. Let's keep this value somewhere. You start shifting six here, six goes there. And then your J comes back, J comes here, right? Because of this step here, right? And then you, you again check if ARR of J is greater than key, yes. 3 is greater than 1. Again, you will shift 3 here. Then you shift j here. Then again, you shift 2 here. Then you shift j here. And then now j becomes minus 1. Let's stop the loop and shift 1 here. You can just do the same thing for 5. Let's do that quickly. So what you will do is you will shift the value of i here, which means certain things are going to change. Now this i becomes 4. Uh, this j becomes 3. The key value now is 5, right? Again, you do the same things. Uh, you keep your j here because j is just i minus 1. Then you compare. If the ARR of j, which is 6 in this case, is greater than uh, the key, yes. Let's do the shifting. Now, how do we do that? Let's move that here. And then we have to shift 6 here. j goes here. Now, again, you check. Is the ARR of j is greater than key? No. 
it's not there so you will just simply come out of the loop and then you will keep five here and if you can see it's all sorted so this is the logic let's implement this logic in the code now so let's write the logic it's very simple you create a array so let's say this array is arr is equal to let's have some default values to it let's say five six two three one this time we are going for only five values and this is an array okay what next now basically as we have written in the board let's take a for loop now the for loop is going to start with i i is equal to one and we can do that quickly now it will finish at n but we don't know what n is so we can say array dot length and we can say i plus plus right that's one done and now okay let me just remove some space in between okay now what are the extra variables we need basically we need two variables right we need key the value for key will be a r r of i which we have done earlier and then we also need j and we know j is j minus one you know this this is what happens when you know the algorithm on the on the board right i have a i have a board with me so okay those are the things we need okay not j minus one it should be i minus one and then you do a while loop because this is where you do the iteration we have to make sure that j is greater than zero that's one thing and we need to also check if a r r of j is greater than key in that case you will execute the while loop so you will do certain things here now what you are going to do inside this while loop so basically you have to do the shifting right if it goes inside you will say a r r if j plus one is equal to a r r of j right and also you have to reduce the value of j so we'll say j we can even say j minus minus syntactically that works and for the outer loop you will assign the value for key for that particular empty location and the empty location is defined by j itself so j plus one is equal to key and i think we are done <laughs> so the code is so short uh, let me check if that works what i will do is i will just print the values here so i will take a for loop and I will say int num from array and let's print the values. Let's say print num. I don't want the new line. I would just want a space here. And let's see if that works. Right click, run and boom. You can see we got the output and the values are sorted. It doesn't matter what type of values you add here. Let's say eight, four and run. You can see this is sorted. Yeah. So that's your insertion sort.